Uh, today we're going to talk about the thermodynamic steam trap. Uh, as we all know, there's three uh, different uh, types of steam traps, thermodynamic, mechanical and thermostatic. In this instance, we're going to concentrate on the thermodynamic trap. Um, thermodynamic traps have been around for a long, long time. Um, they're very uh, robust and reliable steam trap uh, and they're compact in size. Um, they're very suitable for high pressure uh, applications, high temperature applications and they're av available in a various um, range of materials of construction. Uh, that's stainless steel, cast iron, carbon steel, etc. Uh, they're very simple, uh, effective operation using one moving part, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, they have very good discharge capacities for their size and um, they, they usually have a clean tight shut off when they're operating uh, in the correct uh, environment. Normal operation, they might stay shut for, shut for 30, 40 seconds and then, and then open again. So there's a distinctive uh, audible sound that occurs during the operation of the thermodynamic steam trap. Uh, they're noisy uh, and not necessarily good for installing them in environments where you might have a uh, an institution of, of, of sick people or, or outside a uh, uh, high care unit in a hospital. Um, they're noisy but they're also good, the noise also helps you to diagnose if there's a problem because you can actually hear it distinctively uh, open and close and you can then tell from that operation whether it's working okay or not. Um, they're uh, suitable for uh, various pressures, but they do have, in some cases, uh, limitations on minimum pressures and they usually are not suitable for operation below about 80 kPa. They need a certain amount of pressure to actually create the, the, uh, the process of the thermodynamics on the disc. Um, they don't like a lot of back pressure. Um, maximum permissible back pressure, usually around 50-80% of the in incoming pressure. And some, some of the uh, thermodynamic types are available with anti-air binding discs. Uh, not all TDs have them and they don't necessarily always need them, but the anti-air binding disc or air venting disc is a, uh, a, a newer invention over the last period of time and uh, it does have its uh, benefits which we'll talk about a little bit later on as well. They're very suitable for uh, mains drainage and header applications. Um, they uh, can handle water hammer and uh, very adverse uh, conditions. Um, they're also very suitable for uh, applications where you have tight steam spaces. You might have a, a, a heat transfer surface area that's very tight in its um, um, space and it could even be rough cast iron type of environment because of the operation of the of the thermodynamic trap it will tend to want to suck the condensate out of that tight space and send it off down the track um, as opposed to a, a float trap which won't have that uh, same effect on trying to drain that rough cast or tight steam space. There's also a few other applications where it could be used uh, to benefit because of its blast discharge. Uh, it has a bit of uh, a great flexibility, well, a bit of flexibility in its orientation of installation. It can go on its side, but it's prefer preferably installed horizontally. Um, they're generally inexpensive and uh, used widely in the dry cleaning industry. Um, they are also used in tire, laminating and timber manufacture. Um, are there any questions in that at the minute? With the, if you've got an application that's got a lot of scale build up, would this be the trap to use? Because it's got a uh, lot of orifice. This will help uh, avoid scale build up because of its blast yes. discharge. Um, scale is usually a chemistry issue so um, but if there's scale building up and dirt and other bits and pieces accumulating somewhere this can tend to suck it out it all depends how it's installed etc uh, but yeah it could help with that environment now as far as the, the operation of the trap um, here we have a, a, a sort of a cutaway of a typical steam trap in this instance we're talking about a steam trap that has a uh, uh, an anti-air binding or air venting capability. 
this is actually a unique uh, air venting capability. Some TV traps don't quite go to this extent, they just have a, uh, a bimetallic um, encapsulated um, air vent in there which is a tiny little hole just to bleed off any air or gases that might get trapped on top of the, on top of the disc, um, stopping it from operating. Whereas this particular trap um, has what we call a, a bimetal ring around it and it also has a disc on top of that bimetal ring and when in the cool position the bimetal ring is contracted very tightly around the, uh, the body of the trap um, and when it's tight it moves up this it moves up this uh, beveled edge here and lifts this ring up which then lifts the disc up so while it's cool and on start up and you've got inlet of condensate uh, cool condensate going in here all the cool condensate is forced out through the, uh, the groove and then out through the outlet tube um, and any air and other non-condensables will also be forced out through the outlet um, as the condensate comes up and gets hotter I'll show you that a little bit further in a minute but what I'm trying to get at is here there, there is a, uh, an amount of air, there's an amount of uh, condensate and there's an amount of other gases being forced out through the outlet. So that's normally on coal startup uh, the, uh, the system hasn't been running at all. Now as, as, as the, the cycle starts to normalise um, the condensate gets hotter and hotter uh, and starts moving through here. As it gets hotter and hotter and starts to approach steam temperature, it gets faster and faster uh, and velocities increase. Um, with the uh, velocity increasing here, you'll also get a, a reduction in pressure in this area here because of the velocity uh, and the movement of the, of the fluid down and out through the system. Also, the biometal ring now starts to warm up because of the hotter, hotter condensate going through and as it starts to warm up it will expand and slide down this, this beveled edge here and as it slides down it will drop the, the ring down with it which helps it to, uh, to start this, this particular part of the cycle. Now when that uh, velocity is, is fast enough and there's less and less um, uh, condensate more and more steam coming through and the pressure drops here any condensate that is in that low pressure area will flash off so you'll get a certain amount of flash steam that will then want to find its way around the disc and up on top of the disc in this control chamber here as it enters the top of the disc and starts to build up more and more pressure over the larger surface area there and that pressure is in excess of what the pressure underneath the disc is, uh, it will snap shut. So when it snaps shut, basically that's your off uh, position uh, and the cycle stops. There'll be no flow through the, through the, uh, the uh, steam trap. Any air or other gases that were in the system would have already been purged out. If this trap didn't have that anti-air binding capability, it's quite possible that air would have found its way up and other gases would have may have found their way up on top of that disc and snapped it shut uh, prematurely before the cycle was ready to, for that to happen because it can't differentiate between um, steam as a gas or air as a gas. So the anti-air binding uh, type of disc is very, very uh, suitable if you've got a lot of air and other non-condensables in your system. But this particular trap is very unique in its operation. Not all steam traps that I'm aware of have this, this type of um, air venting capability. And it's actually a very, very good air venter because it opens up quite wide. Um, if you wanted to investigate uh, further how a, uh, the thermodynamics side of, of the steam trap and how, how that all works, you could Google uh, vanilla serum on the internet. And uh, it basically states, I'll read that to you, 
An increase in speed with a fluid of a fluid occurs simultaneously simultaneously with a decrease in pressure or words to that effect. If you just Google it, you'll you'll uh, get a better understanding. The same principle is used to keep aeroplanes in the sky. Any questions? Uh, I think I've sort of covered uh, a lot of this in that other, other slide there, but what's happened here is the flash then finds its way up on top of the disc, forcing down on the larger surface area there. Um, the pressure over the area of the top of the disc is, is greater than the uh, small uh, inlet port there, so it tends to overcome that and snap shut. Um, once it's forced down like that, uh, condensate stops moving through the system and will start to cool down and build up in, in this area here. The cycle won't start until the flash steam that's in this, um, in this uh, control chamber here radiates off to atmosphere and or cools down sufficiently enough uh, for it to, to condense. Once the, once the pressure on the underside is greater than the pressure on the top, the cycle will start again. Bring it back into this, this, this form here. The disc will lift up and the, uh, the, the condensate will start to move through the system and, and out through the, through the steam trap. That, the condensate that occurred on top of the disc when it reopens will go back out the drain as yeah, well. Yeah, because it's just gonna it's just gonna all condense, there's no pressure left, it's given up all its energy to the atmosphere or, or to the cooling effect of the condensate that's building up around it. Um, it'll just condense, become liquid, and it'll just trickle when when this lifts up it'll just trickle out through the outlet. And the cycle will, will basically just start over again. So these will always cycle, just as long as it takes for that flash steam on top of the disc to condensate. Yeah, you can't sort of uh, control, uh, it, it can't differentiate between um, any gas, whether it's cold or hot, um, and uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really have a, anything to stop it from operating other than the fact that it, it's got to create some sort of pressure on top of the disc there to snap it shut. And if that's air, well, it will snap shut. Um, and it's a very distinctive cycle. So if you if if it's um, if it if it goes off, you can just you can hear it physically hear it um, with your ear. Even if you if you're standing next to it, if it's open to atmosphere, you can definitely see it. It'll just blast out to atmosphere, then snap shut. And when it snaps shuts, if it snaps shuts and you're looking at it, you'll know that it's not leaking, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, if it's gone spitting and carrying on, uh, then it may be that there is a uh, an issue with. It could be the climate as well. If the uh, atmospheric temperature around here is is cold enough, it can actually condense that flash steam quicker than it should do, uh, and it may short cycle um, the whole uh, trap system. And you can get uh, caps to go over the top of them to um, uh, give it a more of a controlled atmosphere in there so it doesn't radiate the heat to atmosphere as well. This is our Yoshitaki TSD42, um, which is basically this design inside. Um, it has that anti-air binding ring and disc holding it up. Um, and it also has an inbuilt strainer. Uh, it's made of stainless steel, I'm not sure of the actual grade, but it's high quality cast stainless steel. Uh, and the disc itself is made of uh, extra hardened high quality stainless steel. Um, and they are repairable, you can take the top off, uh, you can machine the, the, um, the, the seat surface. But every time you do maintenance on, on one of these types of traps and you machine the, the disc or you uh, polish it in some way, you should always replace the disc uh, because the disc itself will be deformed to, to the original shape that it's, it's come to know during its normal operation over time. So if you're going to if you're going to machine the disc inside or the seat inside, then always replace it with a new disc. But this is our little TSD42. 
very compact. That's a 25 millimeter unit. As you can see, it'll fit in the palm of my hand. It can fit into tight spaces. It has a, a maximum uh, pressure rating of 42 bar, uh, which is about 420 degrees C. It's a very uh, universal, compact, uh, capable steam trap. Um, but in most cases it would be used maybe in line drainage or in laundries or, or the timber industry, in platen presses, etc. Uh, robust, we could run over it with a D9 uh, tractor and it wouldn't damage it.